Hello again. I've returned as promised. Um, so we're going to begin. Good evening and welcome to the 22nd last lecture event. Um, my name is Jen Durst and I work in the Department of Student Experience. So to begin with this evening, I'd like to acknowledge that the main campus of the University of Guelph resides on the ancestral lands of the Adewanderon people and the treaty lands and territories of the Mississauga of the Credit. I also recognize that Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples have long-standing and ongoing relationships with this land and that wherever you are joining us from today, Canada is home to many First Nations, Inuit and Métis people. I also recognize the significance of the Dish with One Spoon Covenant and the significance that it holds particularly within this space and within this territory. So I'd like to pause for a moment to share gratitude and to think about the responsibility within the context of this evening and this event. Tonight, you are going to be asked to reflect on different aspects of yourself and how you've received nourishment in different ways during your time studying here. You'll be asked to think about learning, personal development, connections, and friendship. My hope is that you are also able to pause to appreciate these memories. And while you think of what you have gained by being part of this community, my ask is that you also think about how you are able to share this moving forward. This institution, like many other universities, is a colonial structure. It is also a place that encourages critical thinking, the exploration of the past, and the generation of new ideas. So I'm going to leave you with a question. What sense of stewardship do you hold as you think about sharing what you have learned or unlearned during your time here at the University of Guelph? So welcome to the students, faculty, senior administrators, staff, friends, family, community members, and alumni who have gathered virtually and in person with us today. Wherever you are in the world, whatever time zone or geographical location, we're so glad that you're joining us. And most importantly, a very special welcome to our amazing lecturers this evening and to you who have brought us all together this evening, the class of 2024. So before we begin our first lecture, I'd like to invite Dr. Gwen Chapman, our Provost and Vice President Academic, to officially welcome you on behalf of the University of Guelph. Hello and welcome. Uh, welcome to the 2024 last lecture. Um, you know, I was thinking this morning about attending the event today, uh, celebrating the achievements of the class of 2024, the journey that you've been on here at the University of Guelph for the last four-ish years, uh, and how you're about to embark on a new, the next stage of your life journey. And as I thought about that, I thought there are actually some parallels uh, between your journey here and my journey as provost and vice president academic at the university. Like many of you, the summer of 2020 was a summer of transition. Uh, that's the summer that I transitioned into the provost role from my previous role as dean of the College of Social and Applied Human Sciences. And like you, I'm going to be moving on to the next phase of my journey this summer uh, as I leave the provost role and, and start to transition into retirement. So I was reflecting a little bit on life journeys, on transitions, um, and, and I think for you, this is certainly a very exciting time, um, a, a momentous time, uh, but also maybe a reminder when I draw those parallels of how this is one of many transitions. This is ending one chapter of your life journey, but there are certainly many more to come back to. So when I, when I think back to 2020, uh, what a time of transition that was. That was the lockdowns, remote learning, working, studying from home, um, and like my transition to a new job, your transition to being a student at University of Guelph did not necessarily, didn't involve a change of location or being physically introduced to new people and new roles, but you did make that transition. You surprised yourselves with resilience, adaptability and determination as you navigated your way through the next year or two. And you persevered, you demonstrated a commitment to your education, a willingness to embrace new ways of learning and connecting with others. And now here we are today, 
Uh, reflecting on your journey over the last four or more years, the challenges, the achievements, the fun you've had, the friends you've made, uh, the chapter of your life story that you've written here at the University of Guelph. And as you prepare to graduate and move on to new adventures, I encourage you to take the lessons that you've learned during your time here, apply them to the new challenges that lie ahead, and there will certainly be many of those. Embrace change, seek out new opportunities, uh, and never lose sight of the incredible potential within each of you. So class of 2024, this is your moment. Congratulations on all that you have achieved. Best wishes for the next few weeks, also for a bright and successful future ahead, and welcome to the 2024 last lecture. <laughs>
Or maybe you're one of us who's not quite sure what you want to do next. Despite the many past and future differences in our tra trajectories, each one of us is here today, at this very moment, celebrating the exact same accomplishment that is graduating from university. Now, I know that we're expected to look forward to graduation and to be excited to embark on our future journeys. But I know that the reality is, is that most of us are feeling scared, stressed, and a bit lost as we try to imagine what life would look like post-graduation. So let's take this moment to relax, to take a deep breath, and to remember to also feel proud amidst all the other things that you may currently be feeling as you listen along to my presentation. My name is Manah Hill, and I'm a fourth year graduating student in Applied Human Nutrition. As Jen mentioned, I'm very passionate about everything food and nutrition related, and I'm actively involved in this community on campus, including my role as the SNAP coordinator, as well as my involvement with other food-related organizations. But before I bore you with more details of my LinkedIn profile, let's just get right into the presentation. Oh, how did, how did that get there? Oh, okay. Well, all jokes aside, let's actually get into the presentation. Let's talk about food. This is actually my first ever meal on campus, a classic wood-fired Clement pizza. So you may be wondering, why are we talking about food at the last lecture? Is it because the University of Guelph has been ranked number one? No, that's not why. But it might have played a little bit of a part in it. The real reason we're talking about food today is because despite having unique identities, we share two things in common today. We're all graduating, and we all eat food. And that's why I say that food connects us all and that the experiences of university life are closely related to the experiences of eating food. And let me explain. Comfort and belonging. So I moved to the University of Guelph in the winter semester of 2021. It was the peak COVID era with only 500 students living on residence. Soon after moving to campus, I recognized the drastic shift in my environment, my responsibilities, and my schedule. I remember being overwhelmed with all the different assignments, quizzes, and the readings I had to keep up with. Finishing off high school online, let's just say that it had been a while since I was reminded of my academic responsibilities. I didn't have my high school teachers reminding me to hand in homework on time, and I didn't have a homemade meal prepared for me by my mom when I got home from school unless you're counting mom's kitchen. <sighs> During this stressful time, many things brought me comfort, like reconnecting with old friends online, going for long walks in the Arboretum, or ordering the exact same thing from the 100 Mile Grill every single time. The fried chicken sandwich with a side of spicy fries. Before I move on, I want you to think about some things that brought you comfort during your time here at university. How do you plan to bring comforts into your life as we move on and graduate? Okay, so let's go back a couple of years. For me, this was my second and third years of university. This is when the COVID restrictions had started to lift and university life was getting back to normal. This is when I found myself really wanting to get involved on campus and exploring everything that campus had to offer. This is also when I started my previous position as being an RA and provide support, provided support to a community of first year students. I remember experimenting with my identity to see what things I liked, what I didn't like, and where my interests were. One, thing that I, one way that I experimented with my identity outside of getting involved was by trying new foods, like the ramen from UC Chef Hall. And this was really brave of me because I don't like noodles. <laughs> I know, I know. But before I say more controversial food-related opinions, I want you to think about how you put yourselves out there during university and experimented with your identity. What did this experience teach you about yourself? 
challenges, everyone's favorite topic. So it's well known that university life comes with many challenges. These challenges can be personal, professional, or academic. One challenge that I continue facing even to this day is experiencing failure. Failure in university can be minor, like when you spend a considerable amount of time studying only to get a mediocre grade. I mean, I still remember getting the midterm grade back for Chem 1040 and being absolutely humbled. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> but failure in university can also be major, like when you give something your all only to not achieve the outcome that you had hoped for or thought that you had maybe even deserved. The feelings associated with failure, especially disappointment, can make you feel like your efforts and hard work was not worthwhile. You can start to doubt your capabilities, and worse, maybe even question your self-worth. It can, and it is hard to cope with these feelings and emotions. It's helpful to remind ourselves that some things are beyond our control, and that it's okay to experience failure. Take, for example, a time that you tried to replicate a recipe that you saw online. You tried your best to follow along, and were so excited to finally get to eat what you have prepared for yourselves, only to find out that it was the most disgusting thing you have ever eaten. OK, it's upsetting in the moment, but you wouldn't spend too long dwelling on this outcome. Maybe you wouldn't even blame yourself. Maybe it was the recipe that was at fault. Or maybe the flavors just didn't suit with you at that time. So for next time, maybe you would just choose a different recipe or look for areas of improvement in the same one. It sounds silly, but looking at failure similarly has helped me cope with my emotions, accept each situation as it is, and continue to look for areas of self-growth. Before I move on, I want you to remember all the challenges that you faced and overcame to be able to sit here today and to graduate university. As we move on and continue to inevitably experience failure, I want you to remind yourselves that you have what it takes to overcome these challenges, and you will be able to do so in the future. OK, so while the rest of my um, lecture was about memories and reflections from the past, I just want to take some time to talk about the present. When I moved to university, one thing that I kept hearing was, Enjoy your next four years. They're going to fly by. And while I didn't believe it in the moment, I can confidently say that my four years did indeed fly by. I've been thinking a lot about how this year in particular has gone by so fast. And I think it's because I spent so much time reminiscing on the past, worrying about the future, etc. So whether you're one of the students who's excited to graduate, are sad to be leaving, or are stressed about the future like me, one thing that I continuously find all of us doing is failing to live in the present and to really experience the last few days of being an undergraduate student. With April 8th coming up, soon we'll sit in our last lecture, and I don't mean this one, and of, ever of our undergraduate journey. We'll get the last coffee at Bullring or a last crepe at Mountain Hall. While some of these things may be on your bucket list, like the crepe at Mountain is on mine, many of the mundane day-to-day -day things that you do may slip by without you even noticing until they will only be a memory for you to remember. The feeling can be compared to absolutely demolishing a meal in 20 seconds and then regretting that you didn't eat it slower. If you had ate the meal at a slower pace, you would have been able to enjoy it for much longer. You would have been able to explore the flavors and the textures or the sensory properties of your meal for much longer. So let me end the lecture with some advice. This advice is to slow down, to take a look around, and to really savor the last few days of our undergraduate journeys. And remember, to also feel proud, because every one of us here today deserves to feel proud for accomplishing the feat of graduating from university. And that's all for me. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Manahil. I see some folks are getting teary. I think your speech really touched a nerve. So that combination of remembering all the fond times, the times with friends, studying late, um, and then also looking forward to the future and doing that with a sense of pride, but also a bit of hesitation, a bit of stress, um, and, and thinking back on some of the skills that you've gained during your time here to rely on those skills to bring you forward uh, within your next steps. So thank you. As you may recall, graduating students were invited to vote for the faculty member that you wanted to hear from one more time. While only one faculty is lecturing this evening, I want to share with you the list of those who were voted as the top 10 faculty alongside our lecturer. They represent six out of seven of our colleges and are a range of academic disciplines. They are Dr. Matthew Demers, Department of Mathematics and Statistics in the College of Engineering and Physical Sciences. Dr. Neil J. McCluskey, Department of Biomedical Sciences in the Ontario Veterinarian College. Dr. Andy Robinson, Department of Animal Bioscience, Ontario Agricultural College. Dr. Kathleen Roddenberg, Hospitality, Food and Tourism Management in the Lang School of Business. Dr. Stephanie Howells, Department of Sociology and Anthropology in the College of Social and Applied Human Sciences. Dr. Tarek Sala, Department of Biomedical Sciences in the Ontario Veterinary College. Dr. Dan Grunspin, Department of Integrative Bi Biology in the College of Biological Sciences. Dr. Dan Megan, Department of Psychology in the College of Social and Applied Human Sciences. And Dr. Ruben Berga, Department of Management in the Lang School of Business. Congratulations to all of the faculty members who are nominated. It's really obvious that we have some fantastic folks teaching at our university. So I'd like to pause and give those folks a round of applause. And to the faculty who were nominated, thank you to each of you for being the kind of instructor that students remember. Uh, where students go out of their way to click on a link in the email that I sent them to vote for you, um, and for being the mentor and role models that past, current, and future Griffins can continue to rely on. This year's lecturer, Dr. Don Mercer, is an assistant professor, food sciences, in the Ontario Agriculture College at the University of Guelph. Dr. Don Mercer, PN, is an associate professor with the Department of Food Science, University of Guelph, and is a fellow of the International Academy of Food Sciences and Technology. His research interests are in food process engineering with specific emphasis on dehydration and drying. Don will be retiring at the end of April this year after 27 years of service at the University of Guelph. And so I find it really fitting that this is also Don's last lecture this evening as well. From 2003 to 2020, Don co-chaired the International Union of Food Science and Technology Distant Education Task Force in developing and delivering training modules for food industry workers in sub-Saharan Africa. In addition, he has participated in the Education for Employment program sponsored by the Canadian government to develop food-based training programs in Tanzania, Dominica, and St. Vincent of the Grenadines. From 2014 to 2018, Don worked with the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture and the IUFOST to present food processing workshops for entrepreneurs and small-scale farmers in the Caribbean, South America, Southeast Asia, and Africa. He is currently working on additional projects to promote the availability of nutrition of, no, let's try that again. <laughs> he is currently working on additional projects to promote the availability of instructional material for small scale processors and entrepreneurs. Prior to joining the University of Guelph, Don spent 10 years with the research branch of the Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada and 14 years as a senior research engineer with Kraft General Foods Canada. 
It is with great pleasure that I introduce this year's faculty lecturer, John Mercer. Thank you ever so much for the kind introduction, Jen. I really appreciate it. And it's so nice to see all of you here today. I hope I can live up to your expectations. Welcome to the last lecture, yours and mine. Today, we are here to celebrate an important transition in our lives. For many of us, our academic lives are nearing completion and a new phase of life will begin. For those who have decided to pursue further academic endeavors, you too will be experiencing a significant change. When I accepted the honor of giving the last lecture, I was told that some words of inspiration would be appropriate. However, as I stand here in front of you, the inspiration is like a giant wave coming from you the graduates of 2024, rather than from me. So let's take a look back to see where we have been. Then, let's consider some of the things that I would like to share with you about my journey from graduation to pending retirement. So where did you come from? The simple answer to this question is everywhere. You've all got amazing stories to tell about your decisions to come to the University of Guelph and how you got here. Just take a few seconds to pause and reflect on your journey to the University of Guelph. Next, why did you come here? Once again, everyone has their own personal reasons but hopefully they involve the pursuit of academic excellence. Although the social aspects are important, COVID-19 seemed to put a damper on these. This is a heading of a COVID-19 news update from our then university president, Dr. Franco Vaccarino. It was dated Friday the 13th of March, 2020. <laughs> It was in the early stages of the pandemic, and it said that classes would be suspended for a week and more information would follow. Little did we know the tremendous impact that this would have on our lives, especially for those of you who were entering your first year at Guelph in September of 2020. With respect to academic excellence, our seven colleges have done an absolutely stellar job in that regard. We are also fortunate to have a high quality of academic and campus life. And let's not forget the administration and staff members who make this campus community run so smoothly. Now, I'd like to share a few experiences and approaches that I've picked up along the way since my graduation over 50 years ago. Throughout your working life, you should be continuously striving to build a network. Your network of contacts will be one of the most valuable assets you never realized you had. Looking back, I cannot believe how fortunate I was to have a broad network in place. It led me on a journey from completing my doctorate in chemical engineering at the University of Waterloo to the Department of Food Science at the University of Guelph. As my retirement draws ever nearer, I have no idea where things will go from here. However, my network has continued to expand and I'm optimistic about the future. One thing to keep in mind is to never burn bridges behind you. This is your network and possible future lifeline. For those of you in engineering, this is a rather important bridge. 
Built in 1779, it was the world's first iron bridge and signaled the beginnings of the Industrial Revolution. It is still standing today, which is an absolute testimony to the ability of the builders. You should never stop learning. You should expand your horizons and interest and share them with those around you. This is a diagram of how I envision my immediate sphere of learning. We have a daughter who is an archeologist, a son who studied political science, another son studied environmental sciences, and our other daughter studied general sciences. My wife is a nurse by training and brings that knowledge and more to our family. It is absolutely amazing how much information can be exchanged during our conversations. And you, um, as your individual circles expand, so too does the opportunity to learn and gain insight into other aspects of life. Try to learn from your mistakes. Mistakes can be learning opportunities. Mine are TNTC. For those of you in microbiology, you know that that means too numerous to count. We won't go into these here, but there are a lot of stories that begin, remember the time when dad, and it's just downhill from there. <laughs> it would be good for you to have an escape mechanism. Life can be a pressure cooker, and you need to have a relief mechanism. So try to cultivate outside interests. These may be solo or group activities. Hobbies, such as genealogy, which is one I'm working on right now, creative writing, cooking, nature, and a host of others can provide welcome diversions when things become hectic. Sports can provide opportunities to spend time with friends, as does gaming but hopefully not to excess. Whatever you do, make time for yourself, your friends, and your family. Be sure to treasure those moments because they are pure gold. Don't be too serious. Have a sense of humor and try to see the lighter side of life. You never have to totally grow up. Oh, I knew what slide that was. <laughs> This is my test and exam tie. I've worn it to these special occasions for almost 25 years, and I'm wearing it today. I recall walking through the university center one test day, and a little boy commented to his mother, look, mommy, that man's wearing a Winnie the Pooh tie. She responded in a voice that was loud enough for me to hear, yes, dear, some people never grow up. <laughs> I took this as a compliment, even though I'm sure it was not intended to be one. I also think it's important to put a positive spin on things and not to dwell on negativity. No one in my classes ever yawns out of boredom. They are so stimulated <laughs> from the course material that their brains require extra oxygen that only a yawn can bring. At least that's what I tell myself. I'm still working on rationalizing how to handle things when someone actually falls asleep. You should learn to deal with disappointment. Not everyone will agree with you, nor approve of what you have done and that's their right to do so. A student once wrote a note to a friend beside her during one of my lectures. Fortunately, it was not here at Guelph. It said, he expects us to understand this stuff. What an idwat. <laughs> Unfortunately, she wrote it on the back of her assignment, which she then submitted. Anybody done that? <laughs> My response was minus one half for spelling. What else could I say? The day after it was returned, 
I received a most apologetic email. Try to be a good communicator. The world talks in code, also known as acronyms, so please do not fall into this trap. As an example, AI always meant artificial intelligence to me when I was in the food industry. But it also means artificial insemination. <laughs> As I found out during my first meeting with my DG and the RB of AAFC <laughs> on the CEF in YOW. Translating this into plain language, it was my first meeting with my director general in the research branch of Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada on the Central Experimental Farm in Ottawa. We had a good laugh over our misunderstanding and it was a wonderful icebreaker. You should feel good about yourself. You've earned the right. Think about your accomplishments. They are many. Remember the adversities of COVID that you overcame, but don't dwell on them. Think about the skills that you have mastered and perhaps try to recall some of the ones that you have forgotten. You're almost, you've almost completed what once seemed like a formidable task and you're the better for it. While you're at it, try to make someone else feel good too. It's contagious in a positive way. Have fun and don't forget to say thank you. These were always my mother's words whenever I went somewhere and I've never forgotten them. Bowser here reminds me of all the students who have said thank you over the years. He was a gift from one of my students. A simple thank you can go a long way, so be sure to acknowledge the efforts of those around you. These have been some of my experiences and I appreciate you letting me share them with you. So, where do Guelph graduates go from here? The answer to this question is really quite simple. Everywhere, we just reverse the arrows. <laughs> Here's something to keep in mind. No matter where you go, the University of Guelph will always be your academic home. I am reminded of a rather cynical definition of home portrayed by Robert Frost, who said, home is the place where, when you have to go there, they have to take you in, which is from death of the hired man. Contrary to what Frost has said, you will always be welcome home whenever you return to Guelph. Now, for the last words of the last lecture, always remember that you are part of the Griffin family with emphasis on the word family. Carry that knowledge with pride wherever life's journey takes you. Yes, I've had fun and thank you ever so much. For those of you joining us online, Don just received a standing ovation. Um, Don, thank you so much for your words of wisdom this evening. I know it's part of my distinct pleasure within my role to get to uh, call up the faculty member out of the blue and let them know that students want to hear from them at the last lecture. And I know um, Don, I left him a message and then he replied uh, and I picked up the message and he said, Thank you for the terrifying invitation. <laughs> so thank you for raising to the challenge. Um, and I knew we were going to get along really well when you came to my office and, and shared so many stories with me. And it was so obvious why you were uh, voted to be the last lecturer this year. Thank you. Uh, so when I joined the University of Guelph, of Guelph, which was a little over a year ago, uh, I kept being welcomed into this Griffin family that Don kept talking about. I didn't really know what that meant at the time, um, but everybody kept telling me that there was something special at Guelph. 
And over the past year, I have to say that I've come to agree with the sentiment. And for me, the special aspect really comes from the people and the community here. I think the fact that each year, a member of the alumni community graciously accepts the invitation to speak at this event, event is a touching example of the Griffin family in action. It is my pleasure to, able, to be able to introduce our final lecturer this evening, who is a distinguished alumna. Gabriela Sundar Singh is an actor, singer, and dancer, born and raised in Toronto, Ontario. Her time at the University of Guelph was where her love for theatre truly bloomed. After completing her studies at U of G, she pursued postgraduate studies at Centennial College in children's entertainment, studied acting at the National Theatre School of Canada, and recently completed her MA in drama at the University of Toronto. She is currently performing her sixth season at the Shaw Festival in Niagara-on-the-Lake, and Gabriella's work has taken her from stage to screen, but her most enjoyable work comes in the form of teaching. She has spent many years teaching dance and drama, and enjoys coaching and mentoring young artists to help them reach their creative goals. Being back on the U of G campus is an incredible gift and a privilege. She is thankful to the alumni affairs and student experience teams at the university for including her in this special event. So I am now pleased to welcome Gabby to the stage. Oh, good evening, everyone. Hi. My name is Gabriella Sundar Singh. I graduated from the University of Guelph in 2011 from the Theatre Studies program, and it is an honor to be here tonight as your alumni lecturer for the last lecture. Mm -hmm. um, again, I want to say a heartfelt thank you to those in student experience, alumni in advancement, and student affairs who invited me here tonight, and to everyone who organized this event. Thank you to Manahil Said and Dr. Don Mercer for your thoughtful and encouraging words. And thank you to everyone here in attendance tonight, the community of the University of Guelph. Thank you for such an exciting return to campus. Okay, now for the matter at hand. Congratulations to the class of 2024, you did it. You are here at this juncture, about to turn the corner into new adventures, explore wild new territory, and gaze upon exciting possibilities. I remember standing, or sitting, exactly where you are, wondering what the future might hold for me with this voracious appetite to take on the world outside of U of G. <laughs> now, during these past years as a U of G grad, I have had countless opportunities to speak to students and young artists wishing to pursue a career in the arts, but what makes tonight special is this opportunity to speak directly to the U of G community and share a little bit about what made my time here so special. There is a context that we share that makes our understanding of this school unique. I mean, who else knows about the beauty of lying out on Johnston Green on a sunny day? Ugh. Or running to the other end of campus, trying to get to that class, passing the leaves as they change color in the fall. So, with our shared experiences in mind, I wish to share a few memories, moments, and experiences gained during my time on this campus and beyond. Just think of them as provocations for what's next. Be ready for and embrace change. Change is scary, it is unknown, often out of our control and new. But without embracing change, there is no possibility. And this is coming from someone who vehemently dislikes change, but Without change, my academic career and professional career would, never, would have looked so, so different. Without embracing change, I never would have had the courage to change my acceptance here at U of G from biology to theater studies. <laughs> I never would have experienced the headfirst immersion into the arts that our school offered me. And I never would have discovered my passion for performance and my love of acting. See. I had this dream from the age of 11 of being an orthodontist. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to help people correct and maintain their healthy and beautiful teeth. 
This is a true story. But in the back of my mind, I had the secret dream of performing, of hosting children's television, and pursuing something that would take me away from the path I was currently on. So when U of G offered to change my acceptance to theater studies, change stood before me, but so did risk and wonder. <laughs> The offer turned into four of the best years of my life. I learned the 101 of theater from Ann Wilson, how to hang lights from the late, great Paul Ord, sew costumes from Denis Ono Joffre, learned about theater design and production from Pat Flood, Gerard and Diana Smith, and Chris Clifford, and took my first steps into exploring acting with Alan Falwad, Trevor Kopp, and Judith Thompson. And I do think it was important to share their names because they made such an impact on my life. I was changed. So I learned to anticipate change, see it coming, and embrace it with open arms. Get to know and honor yourself. I work both on stage and on screen and in an industry where the way I look and the way I sound sometimes is the determining factor for whether I book the gig. So I have heard it all. My eyes are too big. Uh, I don't have the right sounding voice. My head's the wrong shape. I don't have the right look. <laughs> the list goes on and on. And any one of those criticisms, I could have taken them and let it stop me on my path. It could have altered the way I do my work. It could have altered the way I feel about myself. But instead, I used all of that unhelpful feedback to fuel the growing fire inside. I know myself. I know what I'm capable of. And I will keep pursuing my passions and interests to the highest degree. My time here at U of G helped build that resilience inside of me. I had proof that during my time here, if I loved what I did, worked as hard as I could at it, showed gratitude, to those around me and was grateful for the opportunities I had, nothing could stop me. <laughs> and by knowing and honoring myself, it has led me back to places like this campus where my authentic self can shine in a place that has always, always encouraged me to be me. Build grow and nurture your community. Echoing what uh, Dr. Don Mercer said earlier. Community does not just happen. Community is the people you invest time in, those you care for, those who look out for you and encourage you to be the best versions of yourself possible. Community is strength when you need it most. My deepest understanding of community comes from what I learned here. Community began during my first days here, making friends in Lenox C study intensive up north. <laughs> As we explored a new school together, I grew my community when I was president of LA, go Bulls, okay? Uh, when I was NOV and when I shared the stage with other members of our theater studies department, to this day, the people who get the most excited for my next gig my new show, my next endeavor, are those people at my, as who are part of my Guelph community. My friends, my professors, my mentors, they write to me with words of encouragement. They come to see my shows, and they let me feel a part of something bigger than myself. I go into every new space, every new rehearsal room, every audition room. I hit every stage looking for a sliver of the same sense of community that I experienced here. And let me tell you, there is magic in the water here in Guelph. <laughs> what we have is truly something special. Finally. I thought it was apropos to offer a quote from the namesake of the festival that I work at. As mentioned before, I'm in my sixth season at the Shaw Festival uh, as an actor down in Niagara-on-the-Lake, all because of the first steps I took here at U of G. I'll read a, a bit more to give you the context of this quote. It's from George Bernard Shaw's The Doctor's Dilemma. Attention and activity lead to mistakes as well as 
to successes. But a life spent in making mistakes is not only more honorable, but more useful than a life spent doing nothing. The one lesson that comes out of all of our theorizing and experimenting is that there is only one really scientific progressive method, and that is the method of trial and error. So I made one of the biggest mistakes of my life in the first few weeks here. I auditioned for a main stage show that now Professor Emeritus Rick Knowles was directing. I have to say, I don't think my rendition of one of uh, Shakespeare's sonnets was what he uh, was looking for. Oh, uh, I had made a huge mistake, or so I had thought. See, I, um, I forgot all of my lines. I was so nervous. But Professor Knowles was so generous and let me try again and again until essentially um, the audition turned into a lesson on how to audition, for which I was very grateful that I took those lessons for it with me. And instead of an acting role, I was offered the position of assistant stage manager, which was a critical turning point for me. Without the love of all the elements of theater that grew out of that semester, I would not be where I am today. So uh, a bit of trial and error and making some mistakes has led me to a fulfilling career, and U of G is the reason why. So thank you for your time this evening. And if there is any one thing I can leave you with, let it be this. To the graduating class of 2024, you are exactly where you need to be right now. Those of us who are here in support of you as professors and mentors and community members and honored onlookers like myself, we are so proud of you and we cannot wait to see what you do next. To the class of 2024, to you, congratulations. Thank you so much, Gabby. Um, so many of your words really touched me as I was sitting here in this room, and I think um, we've heard a lot of kind of those similar themes from each of our lectures. And so I hope you're taking away some of these broader messages. Um, I love Gabby's words of you are exactly where you need to be right now. Um, that's so beautiful. So whatever emotions you're feeling in this moment are the right ones. There aren't any wrong feelings. And so I hope as you um, take these messages away and, and kind of think on them over the next few days, you're able to feel that sense of pride and really look back on your community here at University of Guelph. And so now to close off our evening, I would like to welcome to the stage someone whose job it is to support your student experience in all that she does. To close out this evening is our Vice Provo Provost Student Affairs, Dr. Melinda Scott. Well, what an incredibly difficult act to follow, <laughs> our three just wonderful speakers, but it is an immense pleasure to be here this evening and to participate in this last lecture event. And I want to just with my whole heart congratulate our speakers, Manahil Zaid, Gabriella Sundar Singh, and Professor Don Mercer. Um, it has been an honor to experience the university uh, and community vicariously through your words and through your lives. I also really want to acknowledge the work of our student experience team, and particularly Jen Durst, and those other individuals who've worked so hard to make this evening happen, allowing us to spend this time together and to mark this important milestone and this important celebration. Class of 2024, congratulations. Throughout your academic journey, you have demonstrated resiliency, the ability to navigate challenges and exhibited caring uh, for yourself and for your fellow students. You have remained determined to complete your degree despite the many pivots that we've heard about this evening that you were expected to make, particularly in the early years of your studies. And you have engaged with your coursework, 
the student experience opportunities and your communities. You've embraced and exhibited the Griffin values that you were introduced to when you first, uh, not just even when you first stepped onto this campus, but when you were first introduced to this campus. You can and you should be proud of all you've accomplished in your time with us. As a person, you have grown and developed into an individual that is ready to make their way in the world. As a scholar, you have been presented with opportunities to explore ideas and to develop an understanding and appreciation for how things work. And we hope that we've instilled in you a desire for curiosity and for lifelong learning. As a citizen, you have experienced both the individual and collective responsibilities required for communities to be successful and to thrive. I have very recently returned to the University of Guelph and it is my privilege to be part of a campus and now alumni community that continues to generate curious and compassionate and engaged students like all of you. I wish you great success as you complete your academic work and move into the next stage of your life and your career journey. Your academic goals are within your grasp, and in just a few short weeks, you will have completed your exams and be ready making your plans for convocation. Your degree will be earned and it's gonna be in your hands. Uh, so from my personal experience, I can tell you that the completion of your undergrad does not mean the end of your relationship with the University of Guelph. We invite you to continue as members of our alumni community. And as you leave, remember that you have the skills and the knowledge and the values that your time at Guelph has provided you. You're ready, your future looks bright. Uh, go out and make your way in the world and we're all gonna be here cheering you on and watching you throughout your journey. So remember that you're here for a short time, but as our uh, illustrious panel have said, you are a Griffin for life. So thank you very much, and I will pass it back to Jen to conclude the evening. And so with those words from the Vice Provost Student Affairs, we're ready to close out our evening. I do want to mention that if you don't need to run right away, we have um, a backdrop over there so you can take some photos. We have a few props. We also have a place where you can leave some of your University of Guelph memories on the wall um, to be able to share with each other. And so with that, thank you so much for joining us and congratulations once again, class of 2024. Have a wonderful evening.